11 to the Hooters Ford for the high side to retake the first spot here. Gentlemen, start your engine. Welcome to a new way of setting up a race car. TrueLine has 20 years of experience in the automotive and trucking industry. This simple-to-use design requires no service contracts and makes TrueLine the most cost-effective and reliable wheel alignment system in the market today. We look forward to sharing with you how the system works and how it will benefit your team. This is TrueLine's TR12 Laser Guided Alignment System. The system will allow you to set up your race car in almost any environment. You can use the TR12 to set your offset, tread width, rear steer, caster and camber, and front toe. Use the system at the track or at the shop. The components of the system are TR40 Calibration Bar. This bar is used to check and calibrate your system anywhere. This bar also provides storage of the gauges and tow guns. TR30 Easy Check Angle Gauge. This gauge is designed to give highly accurate caster and camber readings of plus or minus six degrees. You can also use this to make a live caster adjustment. TR36 Left and TR37 Right Laser Guns gives you readings for rear steer, total rear toe, and front toe. Toe readings are available in millimeters, inches or degrees. TR38 left and TR39 right front combination gauge gives you the readings for front toe in millimeters, inches or degrees. TR05 frame centering flags. There are four of these flags and they are used in conjunction with the laser guns to determine rear steer. TR10 and 11 stock car hub adapters. There are two front and two rear hub adapters with precision discs to hang the system on. TR28 self-centering wheel clamp. This clamp is an option for the TR12 system if you are not using hub adapters. Here again are the components of the TR12. TR40 calibration bar. TR30 easy check angle gauge. TR36 and TR37 laser guns. TR38 and TR39 combination gauges, TR5 frame centering flags, TR10 and 11 stock car style hubs. A complete alignment system in a package that is less than 100 pounds and runs on D-cell batteries. Your setup can be at the track or at the shop. Now we have shown you all the standard components of the system, we will show you how to calibrate the unit in seconds before every use. First, we will start with the Easy Check Angle Gauge. Place the gauge on the disc at the end of the calibration bar, and then the technician adjusts the balance knob until the gauge is level by looking at the master bubble located at the end of the calibration bar. The technician then adjusts the camber screw on the Easy Check Angle Gauge till the camber bubble reads zero. The Easy Check Angle Gauge can read degrees greater than positive or negative six degrees. Please refer to the manual for this procedure. The technician then places a combination gauge on the balance disc and repeats the camber zeroing procedure for each of the combination gauges. After completing this procedure, the technician places the combination gauges on the discs next to the mirror bar, with mirrors facing away from the mirror bar. The technician verifies that the camber scales on the combination gauges read equal and opposite. The technician then turns on one of the laser guns and raises it until the laser points to the mirror bar located at the end of the calibration bar. The object here is to make the laser reflect back into its hole at the number 5. If the laser beam does not reflect back into the hole, the technician adjusts the beam to do so by moving the toe adjustment knob on the top of the laser box. The technician then loses the knob by using a 1 16th inch hex key and turns the dial ring until the line is on zero and verifies that the laser is in the hole and the dial ring is on zero and then tightens the knob. The technician repeats this procedure for the other laser gun. The technician then lowers the laser gun and points it to the combination gauge mirror. 
First the technician verifies that the beam is centered on the mirror and then verifies that the laser beam returns to the hole at the number 5. If the laser beam does not drop in the hole at the number 5, he then adjusts the toe dial on the combination gauge to 0. This procedure is the same as previously shown. The technician then repeats this procedure for the other combination gauge. The TR-12 is now calibrated. We recommend that the unit is calibrated before each use. This only takes seconds. Does not even require a level surface. Let's calibrate the centering flags to your style of car. The centering flags need to be calibrated to the vehicle you intend to set up. We will now calibrate the frame centering flags. The technician will measure from the inside of the frame rail at the four ends of the frame to the outside of the body. The technician needs to have all four flags identical to clear the body of the highest inch reading. When the technician has completed all four flags, the flags are calibrated and we can move on to taking our readings and setting up the race car. Runout is necessary to be sure you have the most center point of your spindle. This only takes a few minutes and ensures accuracy. Let us show you runout on a standard wheel clamp and hub style. For the purposes of this video, we will start with a TR-28 wheel clamp. The TR-28 is an option when ordering the TR-12. This wheel clamp can be mounted either on the inside or outside of the rim. The users can offset the disc to accommodate low body conditions. Here the technician mounts the TR-28 to the wheel and makes certain that it is secure. The car must be in the air so the wheels can spin freely. Using the easy check angle, the technician then hangs the gauge on the precision disc. With the gauge in place, you will start with the car in the air and the wheel in the 6 o'clock position with the clamping knob as the reference point. The technician then zeroes the caster scale and rotates the wheel until it is in the 12 o'clock position, gently keeping the easy check from rotating. The technician then takes a reading of the caster scale and adjusts the knob closest to the clamping knob until the caster bubble moves halfway back to zero. Then the technician rotates the wheel to the 9 o'clock position and zeroes the caster scale. He then rotates the wheel to the 3 o'clock position and takes a reading. Next, adjust the two knobs on the wheel clamp that are vertical until the caster bubble moves halfway back to zero. The end result being that when the wheel is turned, the caster bubble does not move in the caster scale when the wheel is being rotated. The technician would repeat this procedure on all four wheels. From here, we will show you how to perform runout with hub adapters. With the car's wheels in the air so the wheels move freely, the technician places a combination gauge on the wheel he is going to perform runout on. He then installs a laser gun on the other wheel pointing towards the combination gauge and turns it on. The technician then rotates the wheel until he sees the laser line move on the laser box face. He then rotates the wheel until he can determine the high point. Then he adjusts the toe dial to a reference point on the laser box face to whatever number he chooses on the scale. Then rotate the wheel until it reaches the other high point. Mark the wheel and set the car down. You must jounce the car to set the suspension. With the wheel clamp, you can have a rim size of 13 inches to 19 inches, which gives you the ability to set up many types of vehicles. The hub style adapters identifying the high point eliminates having to roll the car back and forth. Using the easy check gauge, you know you're ready and accurate since you have calibrated it. You will also have the option to read higher than six degrees of camber. Refer to your manual for this procedure. With the gauge in place, you will take your camber reading. The technician then will repeat this for all the wheels. Let us show you how to read the caster. It's quick and easy. Use turntables or grease plates so the tire turns freely. The technician hangs the gauge on the disc, rotates the wheels out three quarters of a turn, 
and zeroes the caster scale. He then levels the gauge, turns the wheel in three quarters of a turn, and takes the caster reading. Using the easy check gauge, you also have the option of doing a live caster adjustment. Please refer to your manual for that procedure. Using the TR-12 system, you can identify all the toe conditions and see the changes as they are made without resetting the system. Now you are ready to begin centering and toe readings or adjustments. We will now show you how to take centering and toe readings. First, the technician will have locked the steering column in the straight ahead position. He then hangs the combination gauges on the car and points the mirrors towards the rear of the car. Place the centering flags on the car with each flag being at the farthest ends of the frame or cage as possible. Then the technician snaps the laser guns on the discs on the rear wheels and levels them and points them towards the combination gauges. He then turns on the right laser gun and points the cross toe to the left laser gun mirror. He then moves to the right laser gun and adjusts the toe dial till the laser drops in the hole. Next, reads the toe scale. Note, the reading of the toe dial is twice the actual toe condition. He then adjusts both dials to reflect the total rear toe and verifies that the cross toe laser is in the hole. Once the total rear toe has been identified, the technician looks at the centering flags and records the readings on the flags. Now, with the laser guns on and pointing through the flags on each side of the car, the technician records the difference between the flags on each side, and then adds the difference in readings together, divides the results in half. Here is a rear steer calculation example. On the right side, the near flag reads five and a half inches. The far flag reads five and seven eighths inches. The difference between the near and far flags is three eighths of an inch. On the left side, the near flag reads four and a half inches. The far flag reads four and three eighths inches. The difference between the near and far flags is an eighth of an inch. Add both flag differences together. This is half an inch. Divide this amount in half to find the average. A quarter of an inch to the right. After the technician has recorded the rear steer settings, he verifies the toe dials have not changed. He removes the flags. The technician now reads front toe. He does this by rotating the toe dial until the laser drops back in the hole at the number five of the laser box. Note, the actual toe is half the reading on the dial. The technician repeats the procedure for the other wheel. To set total front toe, the technician rotates the toe dial to the desired reading on both gauges and adjusts the tie rods until the laser drops in the hole. To set individual toe, the technician sets the toe dial till it reads twice what the desired toe is. The technician then simply adjusts the tie rod until the laser drops in the hole. All of the procedures we have shown you in this video have two methods of verification. The calculations you need to verify your readings are in the manual. If the technician desires to verify the toe, he can do so by placing the laser guns on the front of the car and repeating the toe procedure that was done on the rear. That completes the setup procedure for the TR-12. TrueLine. Fast cuts down setup times dramatically. Simple. The numbers show you where you are and where you want to be. Reliable. Runs off D-cell batteries, built to last, and over 3,000 units in the field. TrueLine has 20 years of experience in the automotive and trucking alignment worlds. With a proven product, we are proud to have over 3,000 units in operation today. We are sure that you will find the system is fast, simple, and reliable. We thank you for watching and look forward to working with you and your team. I'm Leslie Cook, President of TrueLine.